Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode. My name is Harmon, and today's episode is pretty unique. Many of you know the brand of beer called Coors. Coors Lights, all those kind of beers. Did you know that's the grandson of the founder of Coors was actually abducted and killed here in Colorado? And that, my friends, is what we're gonna be filming today. So Coors, the beer, obviously, was started in 1874 by Adolf Coors. And he actually ended up committing suicide in 1929 by jumping out of a hotel. Once that happened, uh, his sons took over the business, Adolf Coors III. So his father and his father's brother were the ones who owned the beer company at that time after their father committed suicide in 1929. Already has a very interesting past. Adolf Coors III was 45 years old when he was abducted and killed. So again, this was February 9th, 1960. Adolf Coors III, he was leaving his house at about 7.45 in the morning, leaving from Morrison, Colorado, heading to the brewery, as Adolf was the chairman of the company at the time. So he left his house at 7.45 in the morning from Morrison, and he only made it about two miles down Turkey Creek Road before where he basically was ambushed. Now, Joseph Corbett was a guy who knew Adolf Coors' schedule really well. He made it a point to kind of memorize Adolf's schedule of where he drove. And so he basically hung out and waited on a bridge here on Turkey Creek Road, only two miles from where Adolf lived. Waited for him on the bridge before he basically ambushed him. Um, now, I don't know exactly the details on how he did that. I don't know if he had a gun and made him stop or what, but the police found Adolf's car on the bridge here on Turkey Creek Road, and the car was running, and it had all the stuff in it. All, a lot of stuff was thrown about outside the car, um, but for the most part, uh, it just looked like he disappeared and uh, and they were like where did he go so 1 p.m. is when the police arrived and found his running car so it took them about four or five hours before they figured out that not only was Adolf missing but his car was abandoned here it was running still and of course his belongings were still there too just looking at the article here it says they found Adolf's khaki hat and his brown fedora next to the van. There was blood on the bumper. They found some blood spatters on the windshield. And next to the road here, there's like a, there was a small creek at the time. And they found his, basically his eyeglasses in the creek. Basically what the deputy said was that based on what happened and what they found, um, they suspected that Adolf never left the road and never left the bridge, meaning that he basically was abducted right there on the bridge. That kind of goes back to what I'm saying is that uh, Joseph Corbett must have had a gun or some sort of ability to stop Adolf and, and then abducted him. Uh, keep in mind everybody that this crime occurred basically 60 years ago. And so, of course, a lot of things have changed with the topography, with how the roads are now, and in the fact that there is no bridge anymore. They, they, uh, they either tore it out or it just stopped being in use. The creek that was here isn't here anymore either, so I think once the creek dried up, the bridge got knocked down. 60 years ago, uh, the bridge where he stopped his car and it was idling at where he was abducted at it's basically right here where i'm standing on the corner of turkey creek road and then there's the highway next to me as well um yeah so guys my my best interpretation of the articles and the pictures i've seen online make the bridge somewhere basically right here um, I don't know if it was going like that way across or coming up the road, but the bridge was basically right around here. 
uh, where they found his car and it was all his stuff was left. Now, when when the police finally came here to Turkey Creek Road and found his car running and all his stuff, that is when Joseph Corbett basically went back to his house in Denver, which is not that far away. He put a ransom note and sent it to Adolf Kors III's wife. Uh, because this whole thing was about Joseph Corbett wanting ransom money from the Coors family because, of course, it was a very big and it's still a big company. Uh, so Joseph Corbett was trying to exploit that and he was trying to get a ransom for Adolf. While the police were checking out the crime scene here, they also were at the post office making sure to intercept any mail that was sent to the Coors address. And lo and behold, guess what mail showed up? The ransom letter. So the police found Joseph Corbett's ransom letter at the post office demanding money. In return, he would return Adolf safe and sound. But unfortunately, that is not what happened. I can see why Joseph Corbett Jr chose this location to unfortunately dump Adolf's body here because it is so, it is so remote uh, it it was a 20 mile dirt road that I had to take to get here and it was like the worst bumpy road and so the actual location where he dumped his body is here off Jackson Creek Road and it was like an old dump site basically um, where I think the local community used to dump their stuff. There was a gate, like a green gate, uh, near the end of Jackson Creek Road, like I mentioned. And, uh, and the actual dump site where, the, where he dumped his body is past the gate, um, like maybe about a mile or something past the gate. Uh, there's like actual dump site or something. And so I read that and I pulled another half mile past where I just was and I found the gate, so. But anyway guys, even though it's a sad, tragic case, um, it is a beautiful area out here in Colorado. Um, I mean, look at the mountains. It's, it feels like I'm back home in Washington State because we have lots of mountains and, you know, nice trees like this too. What kind of fell apart for Joseph Corbett Jr. was the fact that witnesses saw his 1951 yellow mercury convertible uh, in this area uh, at the time of his murder and he also was pulled over for speeding in the area. And so the police put those things together and they took soil samples uh, or mud samples from his car and kind of matched it to the area apparently. And so they are able to determine that Joseph Corbett Jr. was in fact the one who abducted and murdered Adolf Coors III. So nearly eight months after Adolf Coors III was abducted and murdered in Colorado, Joseph Corbett was finally arrested for his murder and abduction. And he was finally convicted of, of both of those crimes the next year, uh, March of 1961. But what's interesting is that Joseph Corbett was found and arrested in Vancouver, BC, uh, in Canada. Uh, so that means he traveled quite a bit because they found his burning car in New Jersey. He committed the abduction and murder here in Colorado, and then they found him in British Columbia, which is above where I live in Washington State. So, I mean, if you look at a map, it's like Colorado, New Jersey is way over here. British Columbia is way up here. So he definitely went around a lot. So crazy enough, the story doesn't end there. So even though Joseph Corbett was arrested and convicted, he only served about 19 years in prison for the murder and abduction. And he was released in 1980. Um, so you would think that he would serve more than just 19 years. But anyway, that's what happened. He was released in 1980 from prison and Joseph apparently committed suicide. Joseph Corbett Jr. was 80 years old when he committed suicide here in his apartment complex. Um, I just parked and I'll show you guys what it looks like. Was out of prison for 
a good 29 years because he got out of prison in 1980. So he was free uh, out of prison for about 29 years before he ended up committing suicide at 80 years old. Uh, so his apartment where he lived before he was arrested is here basically in downtown Denver uh, it's 1435 Pearl Avenue in Denver And of course, if you enjoyed this a lot, make sure you give it a like, because I drove a lot to get here. And uh, it was a lot of effort to find this as well. So any comments and, and likes, I always appreciate it. And uh, until next time, guys, I'm Harmon, and I'll see you guys on the next one. All right, guys, my next location is Joseph Corbett's. You can tell doing this on the side of the road is hard to do when there's so much traffic. 